Hi, Augusta. Hi. I'm glad we also have our two speakers with us. We have um Augusta. Sorry, Augusta. Yep. <laughs> Your name is entering my head. We have Farida Abdul Karim, and then we have TJ Benson. I'm glad that both of you are able to join us. Hi, Farida. It's lovely to see you. We see cool hair as always. You know, it's it's fantastic to see you. And the TJ Benson as well is is with us. So we have a very cute small room, and I think that. I mean, ALS style, I, I can't even say ALS style because I'm not sure how DK was running this. I'll probably just have to figure out my own way to run it. Um, but it will be good to do some introductions. So I will call names. I can say an Antonia. I don't know if it's the same Antonia that I know. If you're able to speak, I mean, it's not, it's not, a, it's not mandatory. If you're able to speak, you can speak. If you just want to type in the chat and that's fine. Hi, Tony. Yes, it's the Antonio that you know. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? I literally just now. saw the, the link on your status and I was like, oh, hey, I'll definitely join. So hi, everyone. My name is Antonia and it's just an introduction, right? <laughs> I don't remember how it goes anymore. <laughs> yeah, an introduction and maybe you can tell us something, I don't know, maybe something you're looking forward to this year. Okay. Um, Can I ask for a little request? I'm sensing most of us are going to have our videos up, but is it possible to just get it when everyone's introducing themselves? Can we just see your faces, even if it's just for a second or two? If no imposition, of course, but if you can permit it, it would be lovely. Um, yeah, so if you're comfortable, only if you're comfortable. Yeah, I'm, I'm terrible. <laughs> I can be in bed and just like, swollen and all that stuff. Uh, I'll pass, please. <laughs> can, you, can you still hear me? Yes, we can yeah. hear you. Okay. So hi, everyone. My name is Antonia, and this year I'm looking forward to, uh, I guess, restarting my life, um, if that makes sense. I've had just like maybe a year or two of just like being in the limbo. And so I'm looking forward to new opportunities this year. Nice to meet everyone. Thank you, Antonia. Um, next on the list I'm looking at is Davidson Eziala. So Davidson, I think you asked a message just now. You said you, it was a private message. You said you're new to ALS, so you're welcome. And uh, yes, please introduce yourself and you can let us know what you're looking forward to this year. If you can turn on your camera, that'll be nice. Okay, good evening, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear and see you. Okay, um, my name is Davidson, like you rightly said, and um, but a writer, like writing different articles to do with writing. And uh, this year I, sh I am publishing my first book, Broken Dreams and publishing an article or a group of work by myself. And uh, yes, and you know, getting to know this group like this organization very best and being part of it like a full active member of ALS. I guess good evening. Thank you for that. Um, and you're welcome. So I think you're going to enjoy it here. Augusta, you're up next on my list. Okay. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Um, good evening. So there's Hi, nothing Augusta. to see. <laughs> so we just enjoyed the photo. Um, so my name is Augusta and um, I'm a medical doctor and communication enthusiast. So um, this year, I'm expecting good news. I mean, <laughs> I got an acceptance and a rejection today. So um, I'm still expecting more good news and um, that's it. <laughs> anyway, congratulations. Thank you. One acceptance is worth like 1 million rejections. So that rejection you accepted is very easily canceled out. So congratulations. Um, Dr. Augusta, and yeah, I mean, good things this year, good things in 2000 and 
22. Uh, I think next on my list is uh, Ekati. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Um, am I audible? Yes. Hi, Ekati. Good evening. Hi, Tani. It's good to be here. Um, I'm Ekati Edima Ete, and um, member of ALS. Uh, this year, I think I'm looking forward to the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ because there's too much drama in the world. Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> May I don't know if I'm ready. So please, <laughs> you should take it easy with the with the wishes because who knows? Maybe God is listening to you. But I mean, that's that's nice and that's interesting. Nurudin, are you there and are you able to speak? Yes, good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Nurudin Omar. I'm a medical doctor from Suleja. I'm joining this meeting from Suleja. I think I've attended the ALS meeting just once, about two weeks ago. And since then, I've decided to, to make it a habit. I love writing and literature, but uh, I've never really given it much effort. But I think that is going to change this year. That's why I'm joining this meeting today. Amen to that, you know. And you're welcome. Nurdin plus one. Please, what's your baby's name? Okay, Yusra. <laughs> Yusra. Hi, Yusra. <laughs> you're giving a very early start, which is which is which is um splendid, which is good. So you're both welcome. I hope you enjoy mm -hmm. the session. Kabura Zakama. Are you there? Kabura, if you're there, we're just introducing ourselves and then saying something that we are looking forward to this year. All right. Um, my name is Kabura Zakama. I'm sorry I can't put on my camera. Uh, I'm, I'm in a, a little bit crowded place. So uh, Kabura Zakama, I love poetry and uh, my book, my book of poem, The Chant Leave. Um, I mean, Chant of the Angry. <laughs> I, I was then, The Chant Leave, The Man Lived was my first collection. My book of poems, The, the um, Chant of the Angry is, is half out. I've got some advanced copies, but the rest of the copies are still coming out. I love poetry and my dream for this year is to write more. Um, last year, I was lazy in terms of writing, but this year I've told myself I'm going to write and write and write. I'm also going to build my presence online. So um, I've moved my, I've rebranded my Instagram page, my Facebook page, my blog, um, and, and a few other areas. I'm also going to work on my website next. So my plans this year is really to write and to create a vibrant online brand for Kabura Sakama. Thank you. Nice to meet all of you. Oh, big dreams. Oh, big plans, I'd say, because those sounds more like those sounds. Hey, this <laughs> those sound more like plans and dreams. But that's that's great to know and that's great to hear. You're welcome. The last name I think I can see here is um Vivian, Vivian Obona. But Vivian, you said you had to step away, so I'm not sure you're here now. You had 15 or 20 minutes. So I don't think she's here. So maybe when she gets back, she can introduce herself. And um, did I introduce myself? I introduced myself, yes. But then what am I looking forward to this year? I think uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to, to stability. Yeah, maybe I'm looking forward to a bit of stability and then my my year started on a very Ecclesiastes chapter one note, so but I think that that is fading off um a little bit. So maybe I'm I'm growing back my my faith in the world because I was just losing faith in the world. Things are just getting from bad to worse and everything. So I'm looking forward to a bit more stability. Now I want to turn over to our speakers. So we've already heard a bit from Farida. So I think we'll just start from Farida. So Farida, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and then just anything else you'd like to add to your introduction.
your mic is muted. I don't know if you're speaking. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. Um, yeah, I was like, that question always makes me nervous because I'm just like, there's different things I'm about. So I'll stick to my creative identity for this. Uh, yeah, I'm Farida. I am a writer um, slash retired art curator. Um, I used to, I started out with fiction and nonfiction, but recently I've just sort of abandoned fiction because nonfiction feels like my true calling. Uh, what else am I supposed to answer? What I'm looking forward to this year, right? What you're looking forward to this year, but then Farida, you know, you're one of our speakers. So you're going to have to start from the beginning. Like you were born on Wednesday, July. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. I was I will try my best. I was born in Lagos, which is where I've spent most of my life. Um, but I have lived in Lagos, Abuja, Yola, Kaduna, and Kwara State. Um, I kind of always had a creative streak since I was a kid. Um, my first few jobs when I finished school were for a magazine and then for a television station. Um, but since then, I haven't written as a full-time job. I've mostly freelanced. Um, I am very passionate about art and film. Um, and so a lot of my essays tend to always infuse some element of art and film in them. Um, I've written some fictional stories. Last year, I won an award for a short story that I wrote. And I was also shortlisted for the Miles Moreland Award, if any of you happen to know what that is. Um, I've also written nonfiction. Um, some of the people that have published me have been Harvard, um, CNN, Quartz, Aussie, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I'm grateful to be at a point in my life where I can make some kind of living from my writing. It's an active source of side income for me because I get people asking me to like write pieces on commission quite frequently. So I'm grateful for that. Uh, yeah, uh, I live in the U.S. right now, but I've also lived in Uganda, Italy, Germany, and um, yeah, I guess I'm a part-time globetrotter. I love dogs, I love dancing, and I'm excited to do this with you. I'm also a big fan of T.J. Benson, by the way, and I can't wait for him to do his introduction because his own accomplishments will shame mine. This year, I'm looking like um, Teniola. I'm really looking forward to stability. Um, things have been really disruptive for me, even more than usual. And so I'm really looking forward to graduating from my program to just finally staying in one place for a long time. And yeah, building, you know, just building my practice, curating my joy, living my best life, etc. cetera. Amazing. <laughs> so, Farid, I didn't mention that you're also in the field of international development, you know, somewhat. He, just tell you know. you just want me to. And uh, you join Wait, everything. Wait. So, okay. You know. So, when I'm not a writer, I work in something called international development, which is a fancy way of saying they pay me or they will pay me a salary in the future to figure out how to solve some of the biggest problems in the world. Um. Yeah, I started off working for not-for-profits and then I moved to working for the government. And now I'm in grad school and I'm specializing in international business because I like money and I want to know how money works. Um, but when I finish graduating, I want to move into what you call corporate sustainability, which is another fancy way of saying, how do we get all these big companies to use some of that money they make into like helping government and other partners to solve some problems, but how can they also be proactive about solving problems and simultaneously making money out of it? Um, yeah. Okay, Tenny, you can't ask me any questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, you've tried, I think, well, fantastic. You know, like I, I, I've always found that beautiful, struggling both worlds. And I think you're doing it the better way. If I could redo my degree, I would have definitely, you know, gone more for the international business. Right. It's just more progressive than all of these theories and nonsense. It was not through my doing. It was my yoga. It was my yoga. Uh, that's like, the mistake I made now. I didn't, I, didn't get an, I didn't get an yoga to advise me. <laughs> to advise me. Well, but thank you so much, Farid. One thing you didn't mention is that you were um, part of our festival last year. So you facilitated a fantastic session on uh, making money from your from your writing. So I, I hope we'll hear a bit of that as well again today. 
So now, TJ Benson, you know, TJ Benson, I just had to invite you to this uh, session because I'm like, this guy, I don't understand though. Like, I see you on Twitter, I see you here, but at the same time, I'm hearing that one title is coming out, another title is coming out. I'm like, now, wow, well, this same time, this same 24 hours that we all have, people are just doing things. So TJ Benson, it would be great to hear from you. Introduce yourself and then every other thing that you want to add. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. But can okay, we see you? Is it possible? I, yes, but, no. <laughs> I was going to, but it's fine. Um, my sister is on video, so let me. If never Yay. takes, <laughs> if never takes like and embarrass me, it's on you people. But it's fine. Um, ah, my house is fine, though, like from this view. Anyway, yeah, sure. anyway. Let, we'll not, we'll, let's not get into that. Um, yeah, I think, tell, hi, Katie. Hmm, yeah, waiting for Jesus to come. I, I, I think we should introduce Teniola because I actually have the tea on you. Like, in a pandemic, you were still acquiring degrees in the UK. You yep. moved to Mali. You yep. moved to... And it's the same Nigeria that you like. You're using the same Nigerian passport with the rest of us. So maybe... International Certified Security Expert. And then she's, you know, causing countries to yeah, re sure. their immigration <laughs> policy. Because of her the government, the government was in Mali or so when she brought up their matter and reported to us on Twitter. <laughs> 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 but well, you know you're actually shaming me because you're not supposed to be traveling during a pandemic so i don't understand what you're doing no, but, no, but like the essential, the, the essential people like you people the essential people like you that's so, you're, that's you're, so we've heard. Heard. yeah Benson, over to you over to you is, is that idea on me i'm the one talking so it's fine. It's fine. I'm, 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 I'm laughing because I, I was laughing so hard because you said you, you saw Antonia. You were like, "Is it our Antonia?" Like I was, I was, I was. I'm so glad my mic was muted because I was screaming with laughter. And she came and she said, "Yes, it's our Antonia. Our Antonia too is no longer in Nigeria. She's anyway. This is about Friday and I. I am T.J. Benson. I am a storyteller." Really, I don't do. I, 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 I'm really just a creative. I don't think there's any other aspect to me. I mean, Faida is the one that is in de dealing with capitalism, and she's always the one who tries to find ways for me to make money. But um, I, <laughs> so I should focus. I'm a storyteller. I work in the medium of, uh, you know, fiction, nonfiction. So Farida said that she she prefers she's sticking more to nonfiction. I was waiting for her to say something, which is nonfiction makes more money, but she didn't say. I was waiting for her to just drop that ball. But nonfiction does make more money. I think the most expensive thing I've ever sold was the nonfiction piece, and it was true nonfiction that I met Farida. But um, yeah, I, I do fiction, nonfiction, and um, I might have been commissioned for poetry in secret, but yeah, people, I don't want the world to know about my poetry yet. And um, I do visual art, um, illustr illustrations, I facilitate writing classes. Um, designer of what? <laughs> I, I make jewelry sometimes. Uh, no, okay, no, no, let me be serious. I'm supposed to speak positively. I have a jewelry business. I work in brass, um, in bronze, sorry. And um, yeah, that's it. What have I not said, um, Tenny? You've not <laughs> said a lot, Shao. Like you just sold an NFT, you know, I saw that one. You want to, you want to hide the money. <laughs> <laughs> I was selected. <laughs> as one of the very in one of the verified crowds of nigerians to go to iowa for a couple of months and that one is not you can't even apply like they have to know your name from somewhere inside all these secret rooms I um, <laughs> so, but actually i'm looking for i really hope more nigerians um publish um books because one of the criteria to get qualified is um you have to have a book published and then people nominate you and um i really want more young nigerians especially from you know abuja or up north here um to have to so that we can nominate them for more of these opportunities we even had um you know i am being asked okay you know who has done it and i mentioned abaka adam Richard, but they want younger people like me 
and then you know they are not in, really enough of us um you know putting work out there so that made me start um pursuing um creative writing classes which i was facilitating on whatsapp for three four years and um some of my layer i can brag about this some of my participants have used the work they did in my classes to get into mfa programs to get published into maga places uh -uh. that you like so someone won the commonwealth prize i'm see i'm 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 I, i'm going to, i'm going to brag i, I have to brag and and this is why everybody was silent when Farida said she was shortlisted for the Miles Moreland. I should have unmuted my mic and, you know, so that they would have heard my reaction. Miles Moreland is kind of a big deal. And it's for her to... us. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> what she does at the same time. But yeah, I'm a multidisciplinary artist. And um, when I got invited to um, talk about this, I was like, first of all, I felt, oh my God, um, I'm actually, I was in the middle of negotiating two different programs in three different continents that I'm supposed to be a part of that were clashing and negotiating my book release arrangements and then negotiating because I'm also, um, I do communications for, I work in the, I, as one of the communications team for Give Directly. And so, all this a day, like I'm just like running through a lot. So, I'll, so first of all, I was like, ah, am I handling it well? But I mean, on the other side, on people looking from the outside, it looks like I'm handling it well. So yeah, maybe I am. Um, and besides, I get to talk about this with Farida. So yeah, I'm down. So yeah, that's why that's why I'm here. That's amazing. I didn't even know that you were working as well, TJ Benton. This is something else. So uh uh. So you work with Give directly? I, I say, oh my God, no! I freelance. Yes. I freelance. If I like, I, I just I I was just called to. I, I just started doing a, an assignment today since December, so it's more like freelance. But in terms of work, I work with um Yale Foundation now. I do. Uh, I assist the program director to create creative writing programs and literacy programs for women and children. So that's the one that I have to be going every day which i mean the payment is low but but it's very it's it's really made me realize that i want to be teaching creative writing for the rest of my life i might not get as rich as farida but um i do Don't like worry. i'll make the money so i can pump, pump it into your initiative yeah, yeah. so yeah i i i do I, I, I want to be teach for the rest of my life. So yeah, that, that's the, it, my work with the Yale Foundation is uh, mostly what, what I do regularly. Well, I mean, oh. that is amazing. I didn't know you were, I thought you were a full-time writer actually. So I'm, that's- um... it's, it's not full-time, like it's full-time everything. You know, the, and I think that's maybe, the, let's go, since we're talking about time management, maybe we should go into that. We should just, you know, the, the idea of when you say somebody is a full-time or part-time is more practical when you say, oh, I'm a part-time writer. If you're writing, if you're writing, you're writing. Like, the, the, it's not like, oh, you just suspend. I'm sure when Farida is doing her um, work in school or, you know, because she's, she just wind up her um, master's, which is totally unrelated to writing. I'm sure she gets ideas for writing, even when she's in class or when she hears somebody say something and then she goes back. I didn't know where she found the time to put together a an application for the Mars Molan, you know, prize, which is a very grilling, um, you know, thing. So it's, I, if, if you are going to be multitasking, you are not, it's not a half of this, half of that. It's full, it should be, to be very honest, I won't lie to you, it's a full all-round thing. The only thing is that everything doesn't necessarily happen at the same time. Like, so there are periods when um, I'm having a writer's block so I can switch to photography or I'm, I don't feel like a creative at all so I can, you know, focus on money making or something else. So it's, it's, it's not, it's, everything is not happening at the same time. I mean, it can, like for me, the past year, things have been happening at the same time, but time management for you to do time management you have to realize that you are a full writer you are a full mother you are a full father you are a full everything it's not going to one part of your life isn't going to necessarily wait for you to you know yeah. jump that one 
Yeah, I'm really That's glad you said that, Jay. Oh, sorry, yeah. Tony, you were going to say what? Oh, no, please jump in. So because it's been established, I mean, I like money. I'll just use a money analogy. Like, so it's the same way if you have 100K or 1 million, it's not the amount that matters as much as your ability to like, to have like responsible money habits. Because if you don't know how to spend well or save well or whatever it is when you have 100K, if they give you 1 million naira today, high chances are you're going to waste that money or you're going to spend most of it on rubbish. So with writing, it's like there's no one size fits all rule when it comes to managing your time. But there are simple things that every writer who is worth some kind of discipline or has found some kind of success, they all have it. And it's some measure of they've built in some level of discipline because as TJ said, if you're not at the peak of your career now, but you still don't know how to like produce work, when those offers start coming in, you're not going to be able to handle it. So for me personally, the best advice someone ever gave me, and I'm not saying it's going to work for all of you, was a friend of mine who was an engineer, full-time, super big brain, but he just kept like, like publishing short stories all over the place, getting nominated. And I was like, how do you make time for this? And he just told me that he tries to write at least one short story a month. Oh, sorry, not at least. He tries to write one short story a month. He said he doesn't finish most of them, but he starts drafts. And so by the end of the year, there's like two or three that are worth submitting. And so that's what I started doing. You know, this was in 2016, that time. My life is, was not as busy as it is now, but I still had like full-time commitments and everything. But I always just insisted that by the end of one month, though, I must have written one short story. Now I didn't meet that goal every single month, but for most of the months I met it. But more importantly, it forced me to start looking for places to push, to push those stories towards. Because I didn't want to have a folder of like 12 stories not going anywhere. So that's when that led to me now starting to like really look online for places to submit. And of course, because writing is hectic, I got a lot of rejections, but it just sort of really started that habit for me of not just being able to write, but also being able to put myself out there. Those were the two greatest things that writing one story a month did for me. Yeah. And then eventually, now I no longer write once a month because I'm not a crazy person. But what exactly. happens with that, if I need to produce something for someone, I will make it happen. Like, it till, today, till today, I have never asked for an extension on any writing commission. My Ooh. whole life, I've never asked for an extension. So it's like, if I need wow. to do it, like there's something that I got commissioned to do in November. I've still not written it through. Like, but I know that when they start to assign, when it's like, when they tell us officially that they want to get all of our submissions, I will make the time and I will give it to them. It's the same with the Miles Moreland thing. Like I wasn't even planning on applying. A friend said he was going to apply and for me to look at his application. And then I got so inspired by his, I literally sat up at 10 PM and just started like writing. And then, so that's the thing, like, I'm not the most disciplined person in the world, but right. what that habit has done for me is just knowing how to commit to some type of responsibility when it comes to your writing. So you Otherwise, built your muscles, that, that's what you did, like your writing like, muscles. Thank you so much. Yeah, so it's like exercise, you know, you just start out with like walking for 20 minutes a day and before you know it, you're running for an hour. So that's really, for me personally, that, that was the start of it all. So find something that helps you build discipline, whatever yeah. that looks like for you, whatever to, your medium is. To pick it yeah. it's just written, yeah. TJ Benson, yeah. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> okay, okay, something like, small, something small, uh, oh, yeah. Our processes are very, very similar. Like, I am very that because when we talk about writing in 2016, so uh, two things, I have never been asked there are two kinds of people that you would meet. Um, there's the kind of people that will ask you, what are you working on? Then there are the kind of people that will ask you, what have you worked on? Now, one kind of people are willing to pay. The other kind of people are wanting to farm. So do you want to guess who is who? <laughs> so like your in-code fans will want to know, oh, so what are you working on? What's the next thing? 
people who are serious, who want to commission you, want to ask what have you worked on in past tense? So like Farida, 2016, 2015, 2014, I was just pumping out short stories back to back. I have a folder of like, 30 something stories where my next short story collection is going to come from. Because I'm saying this because I know telling you, you talk a lot about how, oh, I'm always producing or producing, but a lot of the work I produce is not, I didn't start producing. My my novel that is coming out in July, I wrote my novel when I was doing my IT in 2013. So, but in yeah. 20 in 2020. The story that I won an award for last year, I wrote in 2017. Exactly. Wow. So I, I think another thing I want to talk about is that as a creator, you don't work with linear time. You don't work with the Gregorian, Gregorian calendar. You are just going to have to remove it and keep one side when it comes to your craft and your work. You are the one who decides the time. You are the one who designs the, the time. So something that you did five, six years ago, you are the one who is going to imbue new life into it. And then, you know, I like very, we have very similar processes. I was commissioned, um, I, I was pitched, some, some, so an organization asked me to do something for them, to, you know, pitch a story to them, um, ending of last year. When I was pitching this story, I, this was, I was pitching, this, I was supposed to pitch this story at the time when I had just started taking um, medication for antidepressants. And this was a period when I was sure I will not be able to write again. Like I was sure that people, if it was the last book I would be able to write. But, I remember that I had started something similar, like something along the lines of what they were looking for. I had started working on something that I had kept somewhere in one folder in 2017 or so. So I went to yeah. go and bring it back and I developed it. And that was, and I was the first person to submit to these people. And in fact, like, it's like 6,000 words plus. In fact, I announced it to myself and like, oh, maybe I can even make this into a novel. So you have to, I, 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 one trick is that nobody knew Farida, nobody knew me, but we were walking in the dark. Like you know, you are. It's. it's I think it's. A, I think it's a dangerous thing to walk towards the expectation of um, the attention you receive or publishing. Like you have to remove the vision. You know, the end. You have to remove the. You know, the public end. From, yeah, your target should be. You know, inside yourself because. The People Live Here was a book that I thought, um, you know, I thought it was going to be one of those books that authors never get published. Like, you know, every author has a book that they never get published. But in 2020, I had I had grown a lot. I had experienced so many editors and I felt, you know, audacious enough to revisit a failed manuscript. And I felt like nothing I produced is going to waste. And then I picked that from 2013 and then I reworked it into what it has become now. So you are going to have to sit down with your own work and your own time and your own, you know, center and work and create. It's okay if your work is not, um, you know, my advantage is that for the next, if I want, for the next two, two three years, I'll be releasing a book every year if I want because of my 2015 to 2019. But people on, the, people on the outside will be thinking, oh, TJ, you are what, what? It's, it's not conducive to wait for the right time because I mean, if I, I can't have imagined, I can't imagine having to begin writing my novel in progress in 2020. The work I was writing during that period got scattered by the pandemic itself in terms of timelines, answers, protests. So that has already reorganized my current work in progress already. So please, if there's anybody here that is waiting for the right time or the right conditions. It's not, it's not going to come. You are the one who decides what the right time and what the right conditions are for your work. I mean, thank you so much. I think you guys have already started to get into the meat of what we're trying to discuss today. But then I'd like to say that based on their introductions, if anyone has any question for them, so any question about their journeys, please, you can type it in the chat so you can raise your hand or any of those things. And one thing I'll say is that you guys are already inspiring me because one question that people used to ask me, okay, Tenny, you are so so and so ALS. So what do you do? Like, are you a poet? <laughs> are you a writer? Like eh, anyone you choose. But the truth is that, I, I mean, I used to write. I was like everybody else. I started to write when I was really young. But then to be honest, I haven't written in about three years. So I haven't written anything fiction related or like a poem or anything creative. I just fell into policy and then you know and I just felt like my brain could not did not even have any space to do anything else so you guys have been very inspiring because you're doing everything at the same time you know Girl, 
I, so I don't know how many parts that. in your brain do you have. <laughs> when you write long enough in policy language, it really does something to it your creative you, brain. Yeah. Okay. But I also want to say something that I feel like Tenny does not recognize her impressiveness enough. Sorry, you were in grad school. Period. You were in grad school Period. and you organized Alit Fest. Period. Do you, that is like logistical puppetry at the highest so that's the thing i always try to tell people like it's a creative ecosystem sure like the creators themselves are at the center of it but there's a lot of infrastructure that people who write and create and produce need so that their work meets the people that it's designed for and people like tenny are the ones that make things like that exist okay like we actually <laughs> okay. need more people like there's literally research that shows like our continent has the least amount of like management right. professionals uh, yeah. we have a lot of talent but we still don't have enough people around the talents that can build it into something that's globally relevant so Tenny, don't stress yourself about not writing in three years. When it comes to you, it will come to you. It's the work that you are doing right now. Amen, amen. After this session, you have to come to me. But then I'm I wanted sorry. to ask you guys. I want to ask you. <laughs> I want to ask you, Tenny. Sorry. Um, what Farida is trying to say is that if you can manage people and the logistics of these, you know, things happening, you can also turn into yourself and be like a beast. Like you can manage yourself. You can manage. The, you can say, okay, we are switching. Or like, you know, we are this great um logistical where you know we're this academic person but also we are this policy person also we are multitude you are our multitude we yeah. it's it's a, we trick ourselves into thinking that we can only be you know one thing and it's convenient but if you can manage you know other people and other you know stuff like if you, you can also manage yourself yeah another yeah. tip i wanted to give to people is writing groups to work like a bunch of people, if they're your neighbors, even if it's once a week or once in two weeks or whatever, you can just meet around with people and just write whatever you feel like writing at that moment. That's it. Exactly. Like, so the last um, thing I started to write was a story and I really wish I would go back and finish it. So a short story, it was supposed to be in response to a magazine then that was calling for African erotica and I decided to make it as outlandish as possible and it was a short story um about i mean not outlandish just something that maybe was not my lived reality at all so about um two men right so two men and one of them is um i mean two men uh in a kind of relationship that was borderline abusive you know so yes, I mean, thank you guys for everything that you've said. I was going to actually ask you these questions, you know, because we're also thinking about looking at your journeys. Um, when did you write your first story and what was the inspiration behind that? And then I'd like to go back to our audience again. You guys, please, it's a very interactive session. No? We're not the only ones here. I can see that we are making noise, a lot of noise, but it's also about you guys. So if you have anything to say, you know, raise your hand, ask questions. I can see one question here as so well. We're going to get to this, you know, pretty soon. So, uh, and then Davidson, I'm going to come to you as well, but then I'd like to hear from our speakers. When, uh, what was the first thing you wrote, if you can remember, when did you write it and what was the inspiration? Because I, I'd like to sort of trace your journeys back to that point, you know, that point in your life. Okay, so I can't remember as far back as secondary school, but I remember the first thing I published online. I used to have this blog in university in undergrad that I just used to, I used to call it rude girl. Oh, good to be young. <laughs> and I just would like publish flash fiction. But I think, I guess going back to the discipline thing, I guess I wrote for it long enough that this website sprung up called the Naked Convos. And it was supposed to be all like super revolutionary because it was being frank and talking about adult topics that were not really discussed in our good old Nigeria slash Africa. And the first time I felt like I was a writer was when the editor commissioned me to write a series about a, I guess you can describe her as like Rue from Euphoria because she was like a 16 year old drug addicted person. And it was basically sessions between her and her therapist. 
and it was like 10 episodes. And I don't know what the editor was thinking that he gave me that kind of freedom. But that was, yeah, I remember it. That yeah, was those you. diaries was me. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned a lot from that experience because it was the first time I like was getting real-time criticism. I remember there was a comment, I think it was called Mantis or something. And he just like went hard and my editor would come and try to defend me. But yeah, it was, so Drug Diaries, it was published by the Naked Convos. I was in university. I think I was like 17 years old when I was writing that. And um, Is it still online? Yeah, that, that's like, if I'm if they ask me professionally in the future, if I get to do TED Talks or anything, I would say that's where my so journey started. started from. Yeah. Is it still online? <laughs> it is, Abby. So we can go and look for it. <laughs> 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 we'll ask CJ Benson for the link. We'll go and look for it and read. But that is, I mean... So, wow, because I can see TJ Benson is impressed. So, TJ, over to you, your first writing, you know, story. Yeah, mine was way less glamorous. I was uh, I was eight years old or so, and I had read, I was rereading Snow White, I think. Which of them went into the woods and uh, met seven dwarfs? Snow White, Snow White. Snow White, yeah. <laughs> and, I think it was a bit, I found some parts of it ridiculous. Like I, I I was arguing with some parts. And I mean, people are arguing with those parts these days. So I, you know, I kept on nagging my dad that this was not practical. And so he gave me a jotter with a pen with red biro. I was seven years old, I think, because they didn't allow us to use biros. You had to use pencil to write back then. And then you get to primary five or six and then use biros. And he gave me a red biro, a red pen to write my version of Snow White. And it was, I felt very powerful. And I, I think I even did some illustrations there. And yeah, that was my first time writing on page. You said? You still have it. Ah, no, like Farida, my life has been moved across different cities. So I don't have any of those. And I think, yeah, I burnt my, my writings from secondary school, I burnt them. You burnt them. No, that yeah. sounds like an interesting yes, keep story. Everything, you know? please. Keep everything you said, that you write if you can. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yasin, but why did you burn me. why did you oh. burn them, TJ Benson? Why? Because I was not finishing them at the time. I would start writing something when I, from like SS1, I would start writing something and then I would abandon it. And then you so saw when I would go back home, I'll have like different exercises because of so many abandoned things. So it, they were irritating to me. And so I, there was another reason too, but I can't remember. But I think one of the reasons was like I was not finishing them up, so I was burning, burning them. And I liked fire. Okay, okay. So now we are about to get to the one hour mark. So and then we're going to be doing a deep dive into that. Um, I mean the the topic really, which is about setting, is it setting and keeping writing goals for two thousand and twenty two. So we'll just be discussing about writing struggles, and I want everyone in this meeting to start to think about. Some of the struggles they've had with writing you know we ran a survey at als i think uh, last year just before the festival and we asked people you know what are your difficulties with writing and almost everyone was saying it was discipline so i'm glad that our speakers have started to touch on on that really you know how do you really discipline yourself to to write and they already said something very important that you should not be writing because you are counting down the days or the uh, or the month until you get published because that alone can be debilitating for you because i could even tell from some of the responses we got was that people were saying they they didn't have motivation because they were not sure their writing was going to go anywhere and that should not necessarily be the the push behind your writing so i'm going to turn to David saying, Eziela, you wanted to say something just now, so it would be great to hear from you. And then I want us to start thinking about the struggles we've had with writing. And then I would also ask us, because, because we've heard the good side of their writing, you know, but then we want to hear about, you know, some of the struggles they faced and how they overcame them. So David, are you there? Yes, I am. Yeah, you wanted to say something? Yeah, specifically to TJ Benson. Talked about himself being um, being a freelance writer, but at a particular point, it turned to him being uh, a full writer, a mother, a free time freelance mother, or a freelance father. Uh, if writing a let me say a piece like a poetry, poetry, yes, 
you write and you feel okay this is the amount of words you want on this particular poem and unfortunately you don't seem to get all the inspiration you need at that particular time and you, the poem or the work is being abandoned for you but when you go back to it you feel that or you see that your well, like, thoughts you were supposed to write actually left you and you know you know view of um of what you're writing you understand and specifically um farida she said something about her first book being that she was in the university personally i'm just 16 i have been writing lots of poetry i mean lots of poems it's in a book but that one was not published because it wasn't completed but i'm working on another one would be published but like you guys said you don't need to um look at need to get published and things like that but the question here is after all these i've said the question here is someone like me i'm 16 years old i just finished secondary school and to start where do i start from because i've tried so many my boy teams nothing online is working out well i've applied for this 52 um guy uh criteria as much i've applied for um online writing um, platforms and nothing is just working out so sorry davidson did you say you're 16. yes i am so sometimes it's just like because i've been writing say since i was uh seven but not really something serious you can something that okay it brought out the writing power in me, or let me say creativity in me. But the motivation really came in Genesis 2 when I this is what I need to start doing. Although, definitely, we're in Nigeria, here is this can take you anywhere. You're, praying, you're, you're like your mates are making money in this and things like that. So, I'm like, writing is of no use. But, at that point, I totally didn't burn my books or my my poems. It was actually taken away from me by a left writing. But later on, I came back, I'm like, okay, let's see what I can do. Writing and writing and writing. The annoying thing is keep on going for different places. And I, I cannot just seem to get the particular, or will I say, uh, uh, that is legit. And that is, the really needs writers. And anyone I to apply for is being rejected because either the work is not good or you're, you know, so if you get my question well what do i do now sorry let me just um first of all i know that Farida has a lot to say because i feel like you have asked like three or four questions but um first of all i want to disabuse you let us let's find that because Farida and i have learned the hard way that the thing about writing not making money is a myth like let us first of all disabuse you of that one and keep one side first if i either wanted to settle down yeah like if, if i either wanted to just focus on making money from writing it will be it will be lit i we have friends who are i have friends who are strictly writers like strictly freelance with no security you know i have friends who write for just six months in the year and decide to just chill for the remaining six months and there are lots of them in lagos so first of all let us disabuse you of that false notion that um writing is not going to make you money let's get that out of the way then secondly um i beg you please have patience have patience sit down with the work that thing where you said that you know the motivation goes or the sweetness of the story goes um most writers write first of all for themselves and then secondly for the rest of the world now something inevitably happens if you keep on writing for like as long as i have at some point these days i write stories that are not exactly for me they're not stories that i would read but i see the value what it would do to other people if I, i've seen the way other people have reacted to my stories that i didn't even it didn't really move me like that so i think there's you have to first of all get past that stage of where you're writing work for you know yourself and you have a lot of writing to do i beg you please remove david davidson 
remove publishing and keep aside, first of all. Just like, if you can, just remove it and keep it away from your head. I wanted to be the youngest writer uh, public, that published a novel. I wanted to be the first, I wanted to be the youngest person. So I, I wanted to do it like when I was like 23. And I wrote a novella, Finding, yeah, like Finding Eden, that was the title. So I'm disgusted, I am. But when I finished writing it, I realized that somebody else had finished writing a novel at 20, The Abyssinian Boy. I realized that somebody else had finished writing it and published the novel at 16, Ben Okri. And the book went, in fact, he was even jailed. So I really want you to just, first of all, focus on your writing voice. At first, I was putting my work and I was getting rejected and I was getting hot. Then I had to sit back and ask myself what writing meant to me. The more important thing is not where it will be published. The more important thing is how important these stories are to you. Do the characters keep you up at night? Do the ideas keep you up at night? Do they, do they disturb you? Do they, you know, are, are you obsessed with these sentences in your head? You know, f focus on, you know, sitting down with the obsession of writing, sit down with your voice, identify your writing voice, first of all, before you start worrying about, if it is, don't worry, many, we all write bad stories. I've written bad stories. I'm so afraid I've written bad stories, although I'm not reading it. But they are what they call editors, whose work is to, you know, perfect what we have done. So first of all, produce, just produce, just be producing. Hmm? Sit down with an idea and then finish it. So discipline is what will make you return back to work that you have abandoned. And you have to be comfortable with failure. In fact, somebody, for me, writing is, you know, trying to fail as best as I can, knowing that not much of what I write is going to be exactly how I imagine it in my head. So all I'm trying to do is just to, you know, reduce the um, failure ratio on paper. That's the best my writing can do. So you have to be okay with failure to be able to finish your work or to finish your story. When you get to that point where it seems like there's no motivation, the sentences are still hanging there, but because it's no longer sweeting you again, so you just stop at some point. So discipline will now be like, go back and sit down with that thing you abandoned. Let me allow Farida. All right, so um, there's a lot TJ has said that I was gonna say, so I won't repeat his excellent advice. Um. So Davidson, the reason I asked if you said you were 16 years old is, where are you rushing to, my dear? There's like, I don't even think I was conceiving of, anyway, let me not say that because it's not good to compare yourself. But I promise you, this devotion that you have to writing will in all likelihood never die. So I would urge you not to torture yourself this much, this early on in your career, because there will be plenty of opportunities in the future to berate yourself and to be annoyed. There will be so many. So right now, as TJ said, just enjoy the experience of creating, okay? It is very possible to make a career out of writing, but it doesn't happen overnight. It takes much longer than the average, like it's not like where you go to school to study business administration and you go and work for KPMG. It doesn't work like that. It's going to take a lot of time. So I urge you to find other things in your life that are meaningful and that bring you joy so that your entire identity is not centered around the fact that you write. Because if you do, even if you write full-time or you don't write full-time, if your entire identity is centered around the fact that you are doing one thing, that you will never be satisfied. Yeah? Number three, relationships within the community help. You're not the only one going through this, Davidson. So this is a good step, like you joining ALS. I'm sure there are plenty of writers who are struggling exactly with the same things that you are, you know, and they're probably older than you. So they even put more pressure on themselves. So just find your community find your community, like talk through these issues. And even some of those opportunities that you said you've applied for, you never even know there, there might be some opportunities that are closer to home that you are not seeing. You know, in my, like there was a time when I went to a fancy writing workshop and I thought after that workshop is to the moon. 
And then I was now doing this weird thing of like, just weirdly comparing myself to all the writers that I knew in my circle. And it was like, it didn't make any sense because first of all, I didn't have the same temperament as these people. We did not write the same way. We didn't even have the same dream. So why was I like torturing myself needlessly thinking that, oh, because this person has done this, me too, I have six months to do this. Like, no. And I also realized for me, writing is a part of my identity, but there were other things I was as passionate about, if not more passionate. But for some of my friends, writing is the beginning and the end for them. Like, if they don't write, they will die. And I was like, it wasn't that deep for me. So I didn't see why I would compare myself. But for even people who were so attuned to their work, there were other aspects of their life that they found, like TJ said, that they were still able to create some kind of value. You know, so Davidson, that's, I hope I've been able to, I hope I've made sense. I spoke a lot of English. Um, but yeah, just breathe. You know, every time you start to get really nervous, just take deep breaths and call the nearest creative person that you know if, and just talk through it with them. Okay. You know, what do you think? Sorry, can you just say something? Did you hear me? I said, how has that been for you? What do you think? Feedback from you. From me? Yes. Yeah, um, well, thank you very much, um, to Jay Benson and Farida. But uh, I just wanted to say something briefly, if I can be allowed to. Of course, we are listening. Okay, um, I know you, but uh, you know, the, the way life is, there's a step to everything. And whether you like it or not, just constant. Failure is uh, permanent. Apart from failure, the only thing that is permanent is change. Um, you know, when I, when I started writing, I thought, okay, this is exactly what I want to do. But you know, the way school is, by this point, your dream changes, you enter just two, it changes, this is one, it changes. Then you must finalize it once you get to SS3 because the next step is you're going for it. I, I, I love maybe speaking now, doing it. And I thought, okay, ah, I should go for law. That is um, being a lawyer. I've been thinking of it, okay, let me go for law. And another thought comes in and says, oh, no. what would you find time? Be a writer, be a motivational speaker, be, a, be a, a poet and so many other things. Then I tried to, okay, let me retrace my steps. But fun enough, the way, the way things are going, I, I won't say I started a medium, but I, we all, let me just say we started something that is I and a friend of mine. That is, I don't know whether we call it or it, I just, I know it's called spoken words. Spoken words, like after writing a poem, a long poem, I- Davidson, sorry, I'm gonna call you that through phone call. Davidson, Davidson, can you hear me? I can hear you. Sorry, I'm gonna call you off a little because uh, um, I get the sense that you need more of a personal, conversation because there's clearly a lot that you've been thinking about and there's a lot that you have to say and you will get the opportunity to say it I just feel like maybe this medium is like this group medium is not the most optimal because clearly there's there's layers to the things that you would like to discuss so I would recommend like maybe Tenny can share my email or if TJ is also up to it then we can we can have a separate like much longer conversation around some of these things how does that Katie also, also wants to respond to him. So maybe um, he will definitely... Um, Katie is also going to be up for communicating with him one yeah. so that we could have time. Yeah. David, um, yes, I agree with you that. I think that, the, I mean, you're going to do with a lot at a very early age. So you come to the right place, but then um, it's best that arrange it for that so but AKT, did you want to say something very quickly or would you prefer to um just talk to you because maybe something kind of relevant to everyone here 
இருக்கே செய்து um all right now so so the another in the chat and i think that we can use that to get back on track in terms of you know the the theme for the session so the question is about what time is best for writing so i'd like to again encourage everyone here you know the topic for today so if you have questions on that topic or questions for the speakers please put it in the chat or you can raise your hand because you know this is a very interactive session it's not um it's not a one way session so i think it was nurudin nurudin would you like to ask a question directly and maybe give us some context if you are there mm, i'm not sure yeah hello we can hear you okay um it's just it's like um one is not creative at the same level throughout the day like sometimes you are more creative than other times and i've actually not really been able to find that perfect time usually i have something on my mind i feel like okay maybe when i wake up first in the morning i'm going to write about it but then i wake up in the morning and then i just be drunk. So uh, I think that's why I asked that question. Uh, how do you uh, trap those ideas into your head so you don't lose? Um. Yeah. Um. First of all, our brains are very different. Like our brains and our bodies are very. And in fact, like even during the course of your own lifetime, you are not going to be working at the same in the same period, you know, consistently at the same period. It depends on so many things, nutrition, sleeping pattern, even temperament. I'm very sure Farida gives me night writer vibes. Some people want to write when, I don't know why I feel like you write in the night. I don't know. I just get this very dark. But um, I, I, some people, they want to write when the night is, has fallen and then everywhere in the world is silent. For most people, they prefer to write in the morning. I... And also it depends on what drives you. When I started writing, I was very desperate. So I didn't even have time to be looking for the healthy time to be writing. I was writing in Babin Salon. I was writing in buses. I was driven by desperation. I was not even waiting for you to be inspired. Anyway, I get a line. I bring my, you know, my journal. So I think first of all, I would suggest that you carry your journal everywhere you go so that the moment an idea comes to you, you pen it down. This is my journal. I've been keeping a journal for like maybe three, four years now, five, six years actually. And then the second thing is, I realized that I didn't write well at night. And I tracked it to the fact that in school, I didn't like reading in the night either. Because my friends are dragging us to go and read in class in, at night to go and jack, do a nice jacking. It never worked for me, I would fall asleep. But it's the thing that I read the morning before the exam that will stay in my head. So I just use that to just, you know, realize that, oh, okay, I prefer writing in the morning. But then when a project, so right now my novel project has sat on my head. So as I end, immediately I finish this life, I'll continue writing, even though this is not my in quote ideal time to write. So don't, I mean, just when the thing comes, just, and also with practice, you can even actively reach for it instead of waiting for it to come. There are some things that you actively reach for. There are some things that you allow it to come to you. It's all about patience and then, you know, sitting there in your practice. So ask your own self, when was the last time you got a very fresh idea? And did you write it down? Uh, yes, I did. And that was uh, two weeks ago. Was it in the morning or in the night or when? What time? In the middle of the night. Tom. Oh. Yeah, I reach with that. So next time you want to write, my apologies, but next time you want to write, you can stay up late and see what happens. Some people, a poet, when there's a poet friend of mine who was trying to teach me because I like being experimental and trying out new things. And he told me that the moment before you fall asleep, for some people, when you're about to fall asleep, you feel tipsy, like you've taken alcohol. And that period, any idea comes, some, some of us is when we want to fall asleep that all the good ideas come, or we start remembering, oh, I was supposed to have sent this money to this person. That's, that can be a, you know, a prime time. So 
maybe stay up late this night and see what happens. Thanks. That's right, I want to jump in. Honestly, like TJ, the answer is really just pay attention to your body and just notice. Um, for me, I can write at night now, but earlier on when I was still building discipline, I'm very much a morning person. So I remember like I would write like, because I would get up pretty early and I didn't live far away from work. So I would just try to write like a page first thing when I woke up, like just get the page down. And if I did it for a week, I had a complete draft of something. Um, but that was all in part of like building my discipline. Now I think it's just so automatic to me that all I just need these days is time. Like depending on what time, if I have time and my head is significantly clear enough, like I don't have anything to worry about within the next 24 hours that is heavy, then I will just write, write anywhere, write any place. Um, so there's there's no perfect answer to that. Um, don't be like all those people that read like all those Forbes articles that will tell you that CEOs wake up at 5 a.m. and that's why they are successful. Everyone has a different process. You just need to pay attention to yourself to know what process works for you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you both for that. Um, yeah, I guess it, different things work for different people and you just have to figure out what works for you, you know. You need to pay attention to yourself. And I think that's true when you look at different aspects of writing. I mean, I know one of our speakers mentioned the thing about finding your writing voice as well, because when you're not careful, you imitate you know, the, the, the other people's voices. And yeah, it's just really about finding yourself. I remember a quote I, I saw one time about writing. The writing is when you sit down at a, then was at a typewriter and bleed. So I think you can only bleed your own blood. You can't bleed other people's blood. So you just have to find a way to always be um, very genuine. Do we have so that up about like finding your own voice? Because it's just accept that in the beginning you copy anyone that you can copy because that's just like don't judge yourself for being a copycat at the beginning. But going to what teacher was saying about me pivoting more towards nonfiction wasn't necessarily a money thing. It was me realizing that I am the most interesting person I know. And just writing about myself comes so naturally. It literally feels like breathing, just writing my life and writing about the things I'm passionate about, mostly which is like around film and art. And I was like, when I, it's not like it, was, it wasn't hard work, but it didn't feel... It felt like breathing, like I would still have to write multiple drafts and they were not all golden and brilliant. But the experience of writing nonfiction to me always felt more connected to who I was than writing fiction. Like with fiction, I would tend to get really convoluted. And so just going back on that journey of knowing yourself, and the moment I admitted that, I just sort of, I guess, quote unquote, found my voice. Farida, are you saying that, you, because I hope you haven't stopped writing fiction, you're an amazing fiction writer. I mean, once in a while, but it's like the struggle, like I, the return on investment, like the effort I put into writing fiction. Mm -hmm. Non-fiction. We need to see those pieces. But yeah, that is um that is brilliant. So guys, I'm asking you to ask questions. I'm not seeing your questions. I don't know, is it that you guys have already figured out your writing plans for this year because we're at ALS. I know some of you might be poets, some of you are trying to write some stories. I know some people are even working on books because I know there are people that have book manuscripts. So, you know, ask your questions if you, if ask any questions that you have while I, I also try to ask my own questions. So guys, you've said a lot of things today. You said, um, Number one, I mean, the one that you just said now when we're talking about time was to just, you know, find what works for you, find your own speed, find your own pace, find your own time. But then when we're talking about writing discipline, there was something that you guys shared and further, there was something you shared very practically, which was that at some point you started to write every month. So you got the inspiration from somebody and then you decided to try to write a story or at least start something every month. And then you were able to create a, well, I call it a backlog now, a catalog of, of pieces. And CJ Benson said something very similar. So he, you know, that there was a period of very high productivity that now um, pays off even later because 
when something is written, it is written, right? When it's not written, it's not written. But when it, the moment you put it down, then it's something that can be improved. It's something that can be dusted off. One of my favorite writers is um this very weird guy. What's his name? Kurt Vonnegut. And there's one of his books that when you read the, the introduction to it, he says how, you know, this book was initially times five this size and it was a very crappy book. It was nonsense. And, you know, everyone rejected it. And that even him, when he read it again, he was like, wow, what is this nonsense? But then, you know, this version that he was publishing was a version that he felt he had changed a bit and then just picked the very best parts of what was, you know, a whole lot of nonsense and then made into another book. So I'd like to repeat that to everyone because I think some people joined after you said that bit, you know. So one thing to do is to just keep producing as much as you can and you build you build those writing muzzles. And I know that that is true because I've applied the same thing to say policy writing where I just wanted to write a lot more. And I told myself that, okay, I'm joining this organization. They have a platform and I'll start publishing with them every month. You know, that's one way you get a slot for publishing and then you don't have a choice. You have to actually write the piece so you can publish. So um, as a very practical solution, you know, I'd like to propose, and you guys can let me know in the chat if you think it's a good idea or not. Like if you have writing goals, right? And you need someone to sort of be your accountability partner and you think that it will be okay for us to randomly pair people in this meeting, you know, up as accountability partners, you can you can let me know and we'll be happy to do that because if you have um some plans for the year. So now, since it seems you have a little bit of a shy room, I'm going to start calling people. So Malam Felix, I know you're always available for us. What are your writing goals for the year? What have been your main struggles um, so far? You mentioned some of them in the chat, but perhaps you can, you can speak a bit about them. And what have been some solutions that you have applied, you have applied in the past that maybe you can share with us as well? Is Madam Hmm. Then you're putting me on the on the spot. <laughs> can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. My struggles. Um. So a few years back, I I I think we had some meeting and the publisher of Casafari Public. He, she just remarked that Felix, that she just realized that she hasn't read anything from me in a long while. And you know, when a publisher who kind of knows you realized, I was shocked. And of course, I was shocked to my marrow that I'm not very close to her in that sense. But for her to even notice that in the public space, she's not been seeing anything from me. Because prior to that, when they used to publish, they had a kind of a blog, or would I call it like an online? platform where we used to publish. I've written things, published new poems uh, in Guardian in this day. I've written stories. When next was was the raining newspaper, I, I, I contributed a couple of pieces and all. So I think recently I'm I'm just struggled. So my work had an open uh, a start time and a closing time. So when we say nine to five, I work with the Japanese, and our five was five. So I realized that I recently I just looked through an old blog I had, and I was shocked that I wrote a lot. So trying to say the same thing that TJ was saying and Farida, I realized I was I wrote a lot that period, just because, and I used to write. After work or in the evening, I had more book. I was reading a lot more. So I think what the dynamic that changed was that I think from 11 to 11 or thereabout, I started doing consulting. Initially, I thought consulting would give me free time, not knowing that I'm telling you understand what consulting, working with a consulting firm or being in consulting. I realized that I was that I was always having one endless project, maybe as you're finishing one project, you're going to the next, or you are juggling with two or three assignments because you take you are self-employed so you take up assignments from different organizations kind of running them at the same time so i realized that that affected my writing reading normally i write at night or when i wake up early in the morning um, i think farida says she's an early morning person so i think um, and this is me uh, doing like a self-reflection i realized that what had happened to me was 
that my schedule before I don't take work home, but now I wake up in the morning that my laptop is open, I'm responding to emails, holding meetings. So by the time I'm done, as we are speaking now, my laptop is open because I haven't replied to some emails. I work with the US organization. So even the time difference makes me kind of busy late afternoon stroke evening because that will be the afternoon. So I, 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 those are like my realities, but I realize that I can't keep complaining about my work schedule and all. So what I'm trying to do now is to either weekends or someday within the, during the week to create some buffer. Maybe it could be an hour where I just write, um, push out things that come to my mind. I'm not necessarily trying to write, maybe start a new, project like a collection of short stories because I had written some in the past that I haven't published. So the thing I, I realized I need to do now is to revisit stuff I had written in the past or manuscript that I didn't clean up and, and then try to get them out. They might be old collection of poems, but I recognize that I need to get, let them get out of the way so that uh, fresh things can come out. And DK also emphasized that, and a few other friends have um, have been open about this complaint. Uh, Abubakar Ada once he calls me retired writer, so you can imagine he uses that to mock me or just jokingly like, "Bros, you are now a retired writer because you don't really read much from you." I try to post things like Farida said, free writing. I post a lot of crazy things, or as things thoughts come to my mind, I just maybe use my phone. Break so you just write it off. Posting your free writing, though, that's for you. Yeah, so I've been doing that, but that is not because previously in the past I wasn't doing just free writing. I was writing um, consistently about issues, about things, and like I've been doing. I used to write poems, try to work on short stories, but some of I have not had that. I wouldn't say discipline, just because I have a very crazy schedule. I used to travel a lot before COVID. But now I do a lot more of virtual meetings. I do like four, five, ten so, meetings in a day. So by it's, evening, I'm already in the rest. Yeah. Have you heard of this guy called Tokwe Folari? Yeah, he's a friend. The one in the US, right? Yes. So yes. Um he actually doesn't live too far away from me. Tokwe is busy. Like he has a full-time career. He has a family, he has children who are very young. So he's, but that's the thing we're, we're saying about like, if you have a hundred thousand, if you have 1 million, it's your life is not going to get less hectic. So if like, if you need writing to be a priority, you will force your life to make space for it. Does that make sense? And no, I, you can only start I, from a place of joy. Like that's why you don't have to like for, forget about publishing. Just write, like you know, all the free writing stuff you put. You don't need to post it. Like if you want something that you want to publish, then you're within the ALS community. I'm sure there are people who will give you brilliant editorial advice. You know, so if you've written something and you feel like okay, I want to put it out there, then give it to an editor in ALS and then follow that journey. But essentially, it's if you want it to be a priority, you will make time for it. It doesn't have to be a lot of time. And just start from the type of writing that gives you joy. And then you can go from there. It's really not like, don't, you're, you're, you're like putting too much pressure on yourself. That's, that's what it's coming across as, you know? So just take it back to the basics. What did you enjoy poetry best? Do you enjoy fiction best? Whichever one, just start from that one. And even if it's once a week, or once in two weeks, just see how it goes. Just um, to follow, to figure out what she's saying, follow your joy. Where is your joy taking you? I mean, we are living in a capitalist world that de demands our time, demands us to walk back breaking hours, etc. But does writing give us joy? If it does, then let us follow it. I, I, it's, it's interesting you mentioned Abaka. He told me that he realized that whenever, and I noticed it too, whenever you, I decide that, oh, this portion of the year is going to be strictly for writing. Writing doesn't get done necessarily. I've been to two writing residences and I don't necessarily write there. 
I mean, I, I do some writing, but I do more of editing and reorganizing and more of cultural assimilation with the society there. So the truth is that if you are given that time to write, you are not going to write. Things exist. So I, art exists as a cost. So there has to be a cost to art. Like art has to cost something. If it were just to exist in this, you know, free, unencumbered, um, you know, space, it would not have any value. But because something was cost, like, you know, there was this actual cost to it in terms of time, in terms of sweat or blood or whatever, that's, that goes, you know, that goes to add its um, intrinsic value. So if, if he tells me, if you go for a rights residence or whatever, he, he's a journalist, he's, he works, I mean, he, does, he, he works with Daily Trust, but I'm, I, I don't know if he's still working with them now that he's in the US, but he, he, some of us, at the end of the day, we actually thrive better when your leg is elsewhere. And I find that a lot of writers who are just writers and don't have any other thing, any other interest, they, it's either they keep on repeating the same work or, they become boring or we get tired of writing. Writing, ultimately, you, you are bringing in a world into your writing. It's not that you're just, you know, sitting now inside the time of writing that you have to write all of that. So you, ha you have to be alive. You have to be living to be able to create something that is interesting enough. So the fact that you are involved, the fact that our Madame Farida is this heavy woman that is going to be working in World Bank someday, is going to add to the quality of her writing. It's going to add to the quality of her writing. So, and I mean, I can imagine the experiences you've had. You say you've worked with the Japanese, you're working with the US. If you were to sit down and, you know, put something together, I can imagine what you would do. So it, I want us to see the demand that time, the demand that time plays in our life. I want us to see it as a kind of um, opportunity to help us focus on what is important to us. If, if I had all the time in the world, I'll probably just be churning out boring stuff. But now I know that if I'm going to sit down and write, it has to be something that I have, I mean, I have to be telling the story in a way that is, you know, particular to my experience, as opposed to just writing because an idea is interesting. I have to sit out. so yeah. That's such an interesting point, actually, TJ Benson. So the demands that life is making of us to see that rather, to sort of reframe that as how precious time is and use that to focus on writing that brings us joy. I'm just putting together everything that you guys have been saying. And then I know Farida, you said, don't put too much pressure on yourself. So I yeah. think it's very good. Yeah. Like my only writing goal this year is I will only write, because all this academic writing as Tenny would remember, I'm policy writing really just just something to your brain. And I realized it's been a while that I've written something that felt true to that creative soul. And so I promised myself that once I graduate till the end of this year, I am only writing things about art. Not even film. I'm only writing about art. And I'm just like, there was even one internship that I refused to take at the Smithsonian. And I was like, as soon as I graduate, the time off I'm taking to rest, I'm just going to use it for that Smithsonian internship because I need to go back to my route and then I can start drinking. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, that's, and that, yeah, that, yeah. that's my only writing goal. When you say, do you mean visual art? Yeah, visual art, like photography, painting, sculpture, like, okay. yeah. That's it. And this Nigerian woman. Okay, I know, um, um, Mama Felix, I don't know if you, did you, did you finish speaking? Or do you have concluding thoughts? And then I want some, because I, I haven't seen any more questions. So I'm going to put somebody else on the spot. Ekati, if you are there, it would be nice to hear from you. I don't know if you are there, but if Ekati is not there, then um, maybe somebody that just joined us. Uh, I can see someone called Ogo Maduesi. We're talking about our writing goals, writing struggles, you know, just what we're trying to do as writers. So if you're open to saying something or asking something about that, you're very free. But Madam Felix, first of all, I don't know if you're able to finish your um your comments. Oh, thanks. I I mean, just like what TJ, the truth is I miss writing. So with all the policy writing and all the technical work I do every day, 
some deep within me, I know that there's something right in us when I'm able to give you that time. So I think it's just for me to find a way to structure my time such that I can create like a compartment where work stays and I'm able to have not to bother so much about what I do after work. It's just that uh, it's just for me to find a way to find that balance because sometimes, for you, uh, Tony, you know, and I think Farida, you at George Washington, right? Georgetown, I think. Okay, Georgetown. Sorry, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Great. I remember. Yeah. So I, I think for people who are, I, I, I talk with DK, and DK also is a very busy person. He runs and he still creates time to write. So. I think it's just for me to do a lot more of time management this year and block out times in my calendar where it is dedicated to writing. I may not just have a project, but just to write. Whether it's to fill my journal, like I started before I had, for the past three, four, maybe close to five years, I'll buy a journal, a notebook for journaling in January or December. And throughout the year, I will not drop, I will not make any single entry. So I have about five empty or four or five empty journals. So, but this year, because um, I was in Brazil, over, I, my wife, I told her, I said, look, I need to get back to writing. And she's been encouraging me as well. So I bought a journal and I've started putting down, even if it's just to record, write some things that happened during the day or my thoughts. So I'm already, I've already started. I just said, if I can. Keep it can I, this year. That may be enough uh, writing goals for me. Okay. Can I chip in also? I guess this one is a bit more psychological and really is applicable to any kind of pursuit. Is like let's have expectations of progress, not like expectations of perfection. I'm sorry, this sounds very cliche, but it's like that's why I always say start from a place of joy because if you start from a place of joy, then you will keep coming back. You come back long enough that you will now be brave to do stuff that's not so comfortable. Yeah, it's like, it's I think a lot of the issues that Davidson also seems to have, it's like you have this idea of where a writer is supposed to be or what they should be doing. When the priority should just be on where I was yesterday, is it the same place as I am today? Has there been any progress? Have I learned something new? Have I documented something? You know, it's like we should put, because if we put all these huge burdens, then we're going to stop in like three weeks or six months or whatever it takes. And then you get all upset again about it. So just what is the creative act that brings you the greatest amount of satisfaction? Just start from that point and just that should be your only plan. In fact, for the, yeah. for the next three months, that should be your only plan. What creative yeah. act makes you happy? And can I do it consistently for the next three months? If you can, yeah. then you start worrying about the rest of the year. So follow your joy, basically. Tenny, follow your joy. Antonia, follow your joy. <laughs> There's something that I do where I when I stop writing and you know it has finished from my head, but it has not finished on paper, I'll leave a comment. I'll be like, I used to enjoy words for myself. I share some of this, I, I sometimes I share it on Instagram. I'll be like, oh, you've got this, or ah, um, my um, you can do this. You know, I just leave. Wherever I stop, I will just so anytime I open so in the past when I opened the manuscript, I'll see where I stopped. I feel I I, I felt um discouraged to continue. But when I open the manuscript now and I see that I left an endearment for myself addressed to me, I'm like, you know, I, I feel warm and I'm encouraged. It's like a past version of me passing on the baton to this present version, you know. So I think living small enjoyments and then also um, rewarding yourself for when you made that progress that um, uh, yeah. about. you know you need to encourage that kind of behavior when you where you where you progress. So I sometimes I dance around my apartment when I finish a you know a section or a chapter. I play the music. So, you know sometimes there's this movie you're supposed to watch or there there's this meal you're supposed to try out. There's a section that I'm working on now. If I can finish that section, I'm going to make myself prepare 
apple um apple salad apple Caesar salad with chicken nuggets or whatever i'm going to prepare it for myself so reward your progress that way you are encouraging yourself for you know that kind of progressive behavior or whatever thank you thank you guys i can see someone's hand up antonia yes i had a little question so i don't know like i mean so there's 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 a the part of you know like you have kind of like a new story in your head but then it's not all formed together so <laughs> what do you then do because i feel like i've write had it. a good story write it like, like that like write that it ugly yes as it's very ugly no. and formed and all of that just put it on paper like that yeah don't say so, but- yeah, it yeah yeah, yeah no, I was like, saying that. So what I have basically, I have, I feel like, and I feel like I've had this for like maybe two or three years. Like I have like the basic setting of the story. I know what year I wanted to be set. I know the area, and I even like did the work of going to the place. You know, to kind of immerse myself and that kind of thing. I have one character, but beyond that, I don't know what else I want to do with it. And I just wonder, like, what your process is like. Do you? you know, like wake up one day and you have a story and you sit down and you pour it out? Or do you like make yourself, like do you form on paper as you go or do you like come to paper with inspiration? So I'm just, you know, like wondering. Thing, all of, all, 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 and the two, all of them together, <laughs> like all, all of them together. Because like, you know, we are we are creative. So like I, I, I try to, I, I am always constantly tricking my brain out of being stuck. So what you just said now, the plot you just described, if I don't know anything, I'll just write it like that. I've gone to the place, I've met the people, I I, I know the girl, but I don't know the story, full stop. What next? I, I, am I, right? I love that. Yeah, it's, 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 you, you can even create experimental writing out of that. And it has happened to me. You, you, so in my writing classes, I specialize in writers. I have writer's block. I mean, I used to. I don't know if I still have that power anymore. But like, if you are empty, some people say, okay, where are you now? They say they are empty. Start from there. Start from that full stop. Start from, my, my, my novel that is coming out, the first line is, and so I had to leave. The first sentence is not even complete. But that is also okay. It's creative right? So you can trick. There are times when I truly didn't know the answer to certain things, but I tricked my reader. Eventually, after I, I still went ahead and did it, and then I tricked my right my reader into thinking it was deliberate. In the madhouse, I don't know the mother's name. It's only the nickname that the husband uses for that I know. I truly don't know the, 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 the mother's name. But people now start talking about how, oh, the act of naming and absence. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. But like... What, what what do you know? Put it down. And then you can always return to yourself in kindness. You know, return, always, you know, if you're coming back to the work, always return in kindness. So the part that you know, please, it shouldn't be all figured out in your head. It shouldn't be figured out at all. Pata, pata. If you figure everything out, there'll be nothing. Also, understand that reading is also a collaborative process as is writing. So there even, there's, there's even some detail. If you, over time, if you master your craft, there are some absences that can be deliberately removed so that your reader's mind will have to be woven into. It's just like attachments, when you are braiding attachments. When you create a loop, it's for another strand of, another lock of hair to fill in. So imagine that you are one, you the writer are one loop and then the reader is the other loop and then the third loop is the inspiration or whatever. So you are weaving this braid. You're not just creating the story. It's a collaborative process. That is why different people might have different experiences of your work. So please start. I promise you, I have, I have a folder. Maybe I should, should let me see if I have that folder. If I if I can show you the folder, I have a folder of incomplete stories. I have five or six incomplete stories. In twenty twenty, from twenty twenty, I couldn't write any new thing. So I started returning to finish, like working back on those stories. One of those stories, I was able to finish it. When I finished it, I rewarded myself with a trip to Kano. And then when I, I gave it to my to an editor, the editor pointed out some things. I'm not in the brain space to work on the things that the editor talked about. And I've still kept myself, I've still kept it there with loving words. So that when I even come back to it again, I'm not going to feel triggered when I see the red, red lines. I'll be like, I was, it's, you know, the language that I use to reward myself. So, yeah. Right? yeah. Mm-hmm. Apart from that emptiness or that um, 
nonsense. That thing is not making sense. Start from there. Start from that mm-hmm. absence. What you don't that just start from there. Don't wait for go pictures. I have to yeah. say, you guys are actually writers because you're doing something that all writers do. You're basically trying to like pack your way into writing as little as possible. All of you are asking all these questions, like, what is my pro? It's like just write. <laughs> like writers will look for any excuse to do anything but write. What the act of writing is precisely what makes you a writer. Bruh. I mean, <laughs> for me, I don't like all the fi- with regards to fiction. I have never known the plot. Like it usually, I always think of a place. I have a very strong sense of place, or there's usually just one ca- protagonist in my head. In fact, the first time anything I wrote got like nominated for an award. I literally just sat down one morning and a story that I had written a few years ago, I was like, I just sort of picked it up and continued. It was a girl who was a babysitter for someone. And I was like, I'm just going to pluck this babysitter character and make her a rape victim. You do that too. You do that too. I'm just going to take her. She seems like a, she seems like a cool babe. And I'm just going to write, like it was, so, it didn't even make any sense. Like my first, my first few sentences, I was like, I don't even know what, that, it was like this weird vivid dream that this character was having, like some dream about like demons eating the heads of her family members. And then she woke up and I was like, it didn't make any sense, but I was, I was just writing. That's all. I was just like, okay, well, let's see where this path goes. But also I, I feel like we put too much pressure on ourselves that something we're writing has to be published because I think that's what's doing you in. You're already visualizing what it's going to be yeah. published as. Remove it from your head. And if the story is not budging, go on to another story. You know, yeah. you're not going to get everything you start. You're not going to, most of what you write, you won't publish. Please accept that now. You will not publish most of what you write. So just think of it as preparing. Like Tammy said earlier, one yes is enough to make up for a million no's. So just think of all those ones they are writing as the no's in training, if that makes any sense. But I really just, there's not, there's no unique ingredient to it. Like you're a writer if you write, that's it. You're a writer if you write. I agree. Period. And I, I know TJ, you want to come in here, but then I want to ask you something because we're running out of time. Um, So, you know, you mentioned something earlier in this conversation, and I don't know if you would want to talk about it maybe for two to three minutes, you know. You mentioned that there was something you were working on maybe while you were taking antidepressants. Is this something that you're comfortable talking about? Because, you know, as writers, a lot of us, or let's say a lot of writers tend to be melancholic in many different ways. Maybe it comes from that whole thing about really dissecting life. And I, I, my, my undergrad was in psychology. And according to some psychology research, it, it, uh, I think they even found that we at least are more likely to know how do you call it? Uh, depressed people are more likely to, no, 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 sorry, I've forgotten the reason. <laughs> but then I think that um, it was just something that people that actually look at life the way it's, you know, the way it actually is are more likely to be depressed than people that um, that are looking at life through rose-colored lens. So life is actually depressing in actual fact, you know. So if you wouldn't mind talking about that a bit, maybe how how, how you navigated or how you are navigating um mental health because mental health and well-being should be everyone's priority for this year as well and perhaps if there is there was any i mean there's any role that writing has to play in sort of um i mean maybe a role of catharsis or just distractions or yeah how do you channel those energies you know into writing well first of all i just want to say like i'm really enjoying this chat. I'm glad you invited Frida and I. I knew I was going to do this when I saw Frida. It's like, I feel like we've hijacked this conversation. <laughs> I would even allow you to talk much, but um, okay, first of all, before this was going to end, I was going to ask if there were anybody, any writers here on antidepressants. And sorry, Farida, somebody, Vivian Ugona is asking if you have a website to your work where people can uh, visit your work. So yeah, if you I'll, like, you can... I'll, I'll send you a portfolio link. It hasn't been updated in a minute. But, okay. Um, I seem to be doing more print stuff these days, but um, yeah. But yeah. Also, to answer TJ's question, I am a diagnosed bipolar disorder person. So, in fact, we share some similar medication. So, me and you, TJ. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but okay, okay. But apart from Farida, is there any other person? Also, I was need to ask so that because I'm, I want to start having 
<laughs> you see how you write so, Katie, the fact that you're a writer doesn't mean that you're sick in the head now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but um okay i'm since it's only farida and i who are actually on psychotropic drugs i would just i'll probably for this for this for safety reasons i'll probably leave certain aspects of what i'm about to say out of it so that it's not just be like you know but uh First of all, I would say for those of us who are writing memoirs, uh, writing memoirs or nonfiction, I know that Farida has been advertising it, but if it is the personal ones, they can be quite um, dangerous, depending, especially if you are excavating past trauma. You are talking about catharsis, and almost sometimes I wonder if it is, I don't think all the, with, without the guidance of a trained professional, I don't recommend um, revisiting certain traumatic aspects of one's life unless you are surrounded with love and care and food and people who can like, you know, be there with you because you could literally lose the self that you know and become something else. And then, or you could have, you know, um, even societal tendencies. So, and back in 2016, 2017, whenever I was going to take a deep dive into non-personal non-fiction, I would have... um, friends with me like i'll at least, at least i'll have friends phone phone numbers of friends to call so that whenever i'm beginning to lose my mind i would um call them and i feel like for i i don't think and that another misconception to correct is that i don't believe that broken people become good artists i don't think that there's a connection is a requirement i love I was so relieved when I watched an earlier interview of Ichimamanda where she said she didn't suffer a broken childhood to become who she was today. And I was so relieved because up until then, I felt like all my wounds that I had gone through in life, I could just, you know, turn them into a weapon and then bring it to... But creative writing is not necessarily about that. Maybe those things you purge out of yourself can be for your therapist or it could be in your journal. Creative writing is now like, even if when you are writing about yourself, you um, take it from you. Sorry, I'm also trying to look at the conversations in the comments. But you, you sort of like give, even when you're writing about yourself, you reimagine the work, even though it's about yourself like you, because you're looking at yourself now like in a mirror and you're now, you, you are giving this very candid approach is if your friend might not allow you to say some things that you might have to say about yourself i remember reading fida's um piece in the sales anthology and i was like who is this woman how is she, is she in nigeria is she is she safe like i used to be like i, I had to become friends with her because i didn't know somebody would dare to write that sort of thing so what makes I, I, yeah i just need to point that point that out suffering does not make a good artist in fact there's almost no correlation between that. They are very, you can be a very healthy person, you can be a very happy person. And I'm saying this because now that I am on medication and I am forced to reconfigure my entire personality, it has also affected my writing process. Maybe before I would listen to Adele's early albums to be able to feel bad and then write a sad scene. I have, to, I, I don't have, I have to, you know, rethink the way I create characters now. If I'm writing a villain, am I writing a villain based off someone that hurts me? Or can I, you know, sit down and create an independent image for myself? Or is there an unresolved issue that I have that the fact that my mind is going in that direction is sort of pointing towards? So it's what you have talked about is a very large conversation that I want to start having with um not just with creatives in different fields who have started taking medication because. The truth is that many of us were creating on a very unhealthy, using very unhealthy processes to create, or we are creating out of um, directly out of trauma. And when you now start taking medication, your entire system is warped such that you feel like you might not even be able to write again or create again. You might have to. I used hate and pain for most of my life, but now I am forced to create from a place of love. So now I on my wall I write. Anytime I'm, you know, having, I always look at what I wrote on my wall. I say, I create out of generosity. There's a door that I closed where, oh, there's all this pain that is waiting for you to use again, for you to, you sit down, you can write the pain and then make people cry. But rather than that, rather than we traumatize people, I can create from a place of love and care. I can even create uncomfortable things out of it, but 
my own well-being is crucial. So please do not feel like you have to suffer to be an artist. That is a myth that has been debunked. So many artists have died so that you will not have to live the same fate. So let me just get that out of the way. And um, let's not romanticize the idea of a suffering artist, even with insomnia. I used to feel like, oh, insomnia is this very cool thing where writers get to, you know, stay up all night and write. When I had this, I stopped sleeping in June, July, and I had to be put on medication that would slow my heart rate so that I'll be able to stay asleep while I'm asleep. And it was not a sexy period. I realized that I, I, it brought me to terms with how very connected sleep is to even our eyesight and our body coordination. It was a very wild time for me. So let's not make a dim sexy pick of writing or other illnesses sex because of writing. You are a separate person from the work you do. But that said something, and let me just say this to conclude, that you need to, she was saying something about how you should not base your identity off being a writer. Because it's very unhealthy when your home is seen around. You have to be alive. You have to be a pet. Before a pet who creates, not a tool that is being rigged on people. So yeah. They create two persons. <laughs> a person, sorry, that was very dry. But then, and thank you, TJ Benson, for that. I know Fumi raised her hand, and I don't know if she wants to speak quickly before we wrap up. We have about three minutes. Okay, I was, I was, I was just about to say that. Um, okay, because last year I was part of a workshop that that we write in poetry, um, in line with grief, and I'd raised this question during the workshop that sometimes it's difficult to release when you're talking about grief and come back to yourself without injuring or like endangering your health. So when so when he said when he um when TJ said something about oh okay that he had written on his walls and like doors like oh okay um I, I create from a place of, of generosity it kind of struck me and I was like oh okay that that could actually be a good way to um to remind oneself that no matter what your what inspires or what triggers what you create it can still come from a place that is healthy even if sometimes it might be difficult to balance it out, but it's good to have that kind of reminder. Yeah. Um, Period. Yeah. I, I feel like there's a lot to unpack, you know, as far as that topic goes. So perhaps it's something to think about for, for a future session. I, I do think that there's a lot to unpack because like you said, you know, like you were getting at, when one doesn't navigate these things or manage them in, in the best possible ways, it can even lead to very maladaptive behaviors. You know, and we've seen creatives, you know, do some crazy things and really even become um harmful to 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 themselves or to, to others. So I mean now we have one minute left. I I um I think that it'll be good to wrap up here. Except there are any burning comments or questions. Farida, you haven't spoken for a bit, so would you want to give maybe a last word? Um, yeah, because I actually have a meeting starting in a few seconds. Um basically everything TJ said, um I used to make a lot of assumptions about my like where my mental state needed to be to be a writer, but first, my your environment is very important to you. Keep your environment as safe as you can afford to keep it, keep your company as nurturing as you can afford to keep it. And you see a lot of things change. We're a lot more sensitive to our environment than we give ourselves credit for. And so we need to really pay attention to those things. And if you can get therapy, please use it. Um, I gotta go guys, but this was so much fun. Um, Up Sagittarius. Up Sagittarius. Email is available to anyone who wants it. Um, you can get it from Penny. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. She's gone. And thank you, everyone, for coming today. So the first book jam for ALS for 2022. TJ Benson, thank you so much for being here. I know now, like, we have to, you know, start booking with your assistant and everything <laughs> to see your face. But then I'm glad that you still make time for us. And thank you to everybody that joined this session. Thank you to everyone that shared. 
even if you didn't share i mean still thank you for being here and i hope that it was useful to you so like i said we're going to start recording these sessions um if i mean if you still have everyone's uh permission <laughs> to upload and then upload them on youtube so that you can refer back to it because i think that the conversations were you know very high value and everything i'm glad you're still here so if you have the abuja literary society's email address it's abuja literary society at gmail.com so just literally abuja literary society at gmail.com just email us and then we'll go ahead and put you in touch with farida and I guess anyone else that is um, willing to, you know, just speak to you directly. I'm glad that you're having all of these thoughts at 16 years old. I wasn't. It, it's a good thing. But then perhaps it'll be good to talk to someone directly to just put you through a bit. So it's Friday night. I hope we have um, either nice plans to watch Netflix and chill or nice plans to go out. You know, just anyone, everyone is, everything is valid. Everything is lovely. And yeah, have a good evening, everyone. <laughs>